give it just a second for everything to catch up. And then I've got to mute. I'm going to turn this off. All right, everybody, we're live, and we have got the man, the myth, the legend, Bassmaster <laughs> Elite Qualifier 2023, Mr. John Sokup, back on the channel. Good to see you again, sir, and, uh, you know, good to talk to you, man. Nice hat, by the way. Good company, <laughs> more than that. You know, I love those custom painted in the paint shop. I think everybody knows I talk about them all the time, show them something different. And uh, so we're going to talk to John tonight a little bit, guys. Uh, we're going to find out, hopefully, hopefully, you know, we was talking a little bit before. We're going to do one now. We do one later. And uh, we're going to kind of find out what he, what his expectations are, what he thinks it's going to be like to be an elite. And then we'll get him <laughs> on the show a little bit later and we'll see what what he thought was true and what he thought was maybe a little a little different than what he expected on there so i'm thinking about like when some when an official gets voted in but they really haven't taken the oath yet <laughs> what is that called is the difference between actually being oh a, a i can't remember what that's called senator, yeah senator elect yeah <laughs> Yeah, I guess I'm like an elite elect because I haven't actually, uh, like elite qualifier, but haven't actually fished an elite event. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, but it's it's good, man. It's good. You know, I, you know, I was rooting for you. I know my buddy Brian. Big shout out to uh, uh, Basscast Radio. You're, you know, you're uh, you're a big friend of both shows. Uh, you know, and uh, you know, we we were rooting for you. We told you we knew you it's going to happen. <laughs> and uh, you know, it's like I it's like I tell you, you know, I can't wait to to who's holding up on them big blue trophies. Maybe that big, you know, kind of goldish, uh, got a big world and bass on top of it. Well, <laughs> I, you know, he, yeah, you know, we rooting for him. Yeah. But uh man, uh how you been, you know, a marathon last year, yeah. MPFLs and opens, craziness, decided you're not gonna be crazy, crazy John fishing everything this year. Gonna focus yeah. on those elites, man. So you, know, you and I, you and I discussed it off, you know, off air, yeah. phone calls and stuff. I, I, uh, yeah, I had 20 weeks gone last year, um, 15, you know, 15 national events. And, uh, man, it just, uh, it was something else. It was an experience. I don't know how to put it into words unless someone's done it. I and tried to compete at that level and run businesses and family. And we have a one-year-old at home, yeah. four kids, you know, yeah. uh, you know, listen, I mean, they had a few deaths, you know, a couple deaths in the family this year. As well, you know, life, life, just life, right? Life doesn't, life, yeah. life, life doesn't stop and be like, Oh, it's time for you to reach your goals. You know, it's more like, Oh, let's just pile it on even more. We're making it. Yeah. And, yeah. And, and it, it, it got to be a burden towards the end of the year, but Man, I guess you know Pangrack would always tell me, man. He's like, you, you're trying to qualify to be the top one percent in the world. Yes, uh, it's not meant to be easy. It's going to be tough. It's going to be hard. If you're meant to be there, it's going to be hard. And so, you know, I've uh, I've experienced that, and and man, I am uh, I'm a I'm a little. I don't even know if I have words for it, man. I, I I'm, I'm I grew up. My first word was fish. I grew up watching Bassmaster. I, there you go. I was that little kid, you know, in the in the living room and watching, you know, listen to Bob Cobb and, and watching the old Bassmaster just in love with it. Yeah. Uh, and I never thought in life that I'd even have this opportunity, man. I just thought, you know, I loved bass fishing. I stayed bass fishing and I was a contractor and that, you know, um, that was just that. And then all of a sudden life unfolds in a weird way and just opens up this door. And I mean, I hit the hole. <laughs> the there you go, up. man. There yeah. you go. And that's what it's got to be. Now, for everybody that don't know, I'm going to let you, I'm going to let, you know, anybody that's not seen our previous shows or like I said, seen us over on uh, the Basscast Radio, introduce John. Tell us about John. Tell us what got you started, you know, into fishing. Uh, tell us, tell us where you at, you know, don't, don't give out your address or anything, but <laughs> you know, tell us a little bit about John. Cause John is one of the, he's one of those guys, man. He's a hard worker. You know, he, he's, he's always busting to, uh, you know, to, to get stuff done, whether it be in the business world 
or in the bassin world. So that's why I've got a lot of respect for him. Yeah, I mean, you know, I was raised, born and raised in Tulsa, Oklahoma. My first word was literally fish. My dad, you know, fished. I drowned in a koi pond at two years old, like dead on arrival drowned. Gosh. And and I have been in love with infatuated with water. I was one of those water babies. You know, you throw them in the water and you take swim. And that's all I've ever known is just the love for water. And grew up, my dad was an auto body man, but we had a, a koi farm, a fish farm, mud bottom ponds and stuff as well. Yeah. So we, ne- we never had the money to have big motors. I don't think we ever had one gas engine. I think we had a Mercury 9.9. That you know, went in and out of running, and you know, I think we had more trips <laughs> yeah. where we broke the pull cord than actually, you know, getting, <laughs> you know, so it was all trolling motors, and and yeah. and, and we had a '76 inch tri hole, all, and I still own that boat, I still have it. Uh, that I'd sanded down two or three summers worth as a you know, as a teenager, like 12, 13, 14 year old, maybe 11, 12, somewhere in that range, sanded it down for my dad. You know, he painted it, and that's just what fishing was. It was all about creek fishing, you know. Oh, yeah. Belly boats. Belly boats was a big thing as I became a teenager. Oh, yeah. You know, hopping in, swimming, you know, getting into places that nobody else could. And that's still kind of a little bit of how I fish now, which is why I enjoy my express. You know, putting it back in places that other boats can't get to. I still have that, you know, that in me. And that's kind of fishing locally in Oklahoma. You know, I fished yeah. the Bass Nations uh, for several years, qualified for a couple national championships, Bass Nation national championships. And, uh, you know, I was a, a, a tile contractor and still have that business. But, you know, I was actually out in the field installing myself. So summer yeah. times, I didn't do much fishing. It was because, you know, there's a lot of school remodels and stuff going on in the summer. That's kind of our bread and butter in that time of year. So um, I turned down a lot of regional tournaments and stuff during that time. But as time kind of went on, I, I fished the Costas a few years ago, one, one series of Costa, qualified for the Forest Wood Cup. And I did fish a Forest Wood Cup. And so, uh, you know, it was Oki BFL Angler of the Year mm-hmm. at one point. And so nice. I've kind of, and these were kind of one offs. You just one season, boom, hit, one season, boom, hit. So I've kind of worked my way up over the last, let me see, I probably started fishing. I started back fishing when I was 27. I fit from 19 to 27, I didn't fish because, you know, I got married young, had four, had four kids, and <laughs> just had to, had to provide, man. There was no time to fish. And so, uh, got back into fishing. So now, you know, I've been back at it for 14 years. I'm 40, I'll be 41 here in February. And I mean, uh, we started a company called the Bass Tank, which we sell electronics. And a part of that was teaching people how to utilize forward shooting sonar and live scope. I had, I was like the third person in the state to have that on their boat and, and pioneered a lot of techniques that you see out there now and taught a lot of crappie guys how to use it. And in doing so, I went into the crappie world for a year and fished professionally in the crappie world and got second in the Wally Marshall and Got back into the bass world through the MPFL and, uh, you know, popped off a couple wins the first year at the MPFL, the inaugural event and the third event. And then uh, due to their championship being canceled the first year, yeah. the second year, there was a little bit of, you know, I guess you call it unrest or unknown. Yeah. And so Yamaha reached out and gave me an exemption to fish the Opens. So last year I fished the MPFL and the Opens. My goal was just to fish the Opens until there was no chance of qualifying for the Elites. But, you know, three or four events in, I led for a couple of events in the points. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, I kind of slid. I kind of backslid a little bit. as right. life got tough on me towards the end of the season. But I snuck in, you know, the overall last position, last day, last hey, tournament. It, it's a I marathon, not a <laughs> not a, a dash, right? Not a, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, and, and you did it, man. I mean, you come in, you come in, come out strong. I mean, and, and you, you, uh you held par man for the course and it, like like they say this is one of those things you know hey you made it and that's all that matters you know yeah. i'm sure there's a whole yeah. bunch of other guys behind you that was like dang it <laughs> <laughs> no it's true man and timing i mean i've been blessed and the timing of some of the success has just been uh i don't even have words for it man i i've, I've really been blessed i really haven't handled it uh the way that I should as far as stepping back and reflecting and being, you know, knowing that, you know, there's some, there's a purpose here and, um, I'm just, I, I don't have this. It's a, I don't have the words. I'm not intelligent enough to have the words, but hey, man. Got, it, there's a nostalgic feeling, but you know, obviously it's not nostalgic. So I don't know how to explain yeah. uh, how I, it's surreal. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. it's a surreal yeah. opportunity. I can't believe I'm living in this, you know, Bassmaster. Uh, we've already done an article, 
I mean, I just had, I mean, I've done three or four articles that haven't come out yet. So wow. you know, interviews with Ronnie Moore and, you know, talking yeah. with, you know, talking with these guys. Uh, so cool. Yeah. Yeah. It is really cool to actually be a part of it. it even if my small part is going to be this part, my goal well, is not to be this part. My, my goal is not to be two years and done, but it's, you know. Oh, no, I, I don't part see that the, at all. Yeah. As a matter of fact, my buddy Chris Fleming right here, who we talk a whole lot. He, we we fish together. He's been in a couple of videos. It's it's it doesn't matter. Everybody done said it. Rookie of the year. If you if I'm putting money, if you're betting, <laughs> you're, if you're betting, I'm telling you, you best put the money on John to be to be rookie of the year. I'm telling you. So listen, man, that rookie class is, that rookie class is really strong. It is. And most of those boys beat me in the open. So. Uh, I don't feel like I've got any advantage on them going in. Um, but I will say this. If a strong rookie class is push, pushes each other to, you know, compete for that ROI but gets us all in that classic, uh, it, I think it would be an interesting I, – I would mm -hmm. love to be a part of the rookie class that has the most rookies fishing the classic out of India. Oh, that yeah. Be cool? That would be so, awesome, dude. Yeah. I, so, I, you know. I, I think I've heard this uh, from John before. If you ain't scoping, you hoping. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, i tell you what good. now you know I, I know i know john's got you know a, a lot of a lot of busy stuff going on and you know he blessed me with being able to go out on one of my home bodies of water cherokee uh before an open right yeah before an open yeah, the uh, like cherokee two, open. yeah a couple of weeks before it or something like that and no it was two days before you you got in me oh that is right, right during the, right. yeah right during the practice See, period, right before yeah, you got a better off, memory than me. Yeah, I think they cut off like where you can't be with somebody. It was like Sunday or something. Yeah, and yeah, so you were with like me that. the last moment. You know that. Yeah, which was like my first day on the water. So we did a <laughs> how I break down a new water yeah. video. Yeah, and I tell you, man, you know, getting to watch him, like you know, I that was the cool thing for me. John was probably a lot like, why is this goofy dude not fishing? And I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm just, dude, I'm in a boat with a pro. I'm watching. Like, I'm learning. I'm soaking up everything. You know, I'm soaking up, soak up. Yeah, you, <laughs> you know, and I, I am taking it in and watching and, uh, you know, just learning. And I'll tell you what, man, that was the first time that I've really gotten to see the uh, the forward facing sonar, and I tell you, it blew my mind. I have had a ton of fun with it this year. Uh, but so so let's go back just a little bit. You know, I seen a video that you did the other day. You know, talking about we want you and MPFL and guys, you guys that are out there. If you know anybody that wants to enter, you know, John was uh, John was one of the founders they're not founder in that but he 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 kind of put that that mpfl and I, i'm a big fan of what they do over there and uh this year man what do you think about it i mean i, I think they're really if they can pull it off this year i think it is going to be a a big deal because uh they've upped the the payout to a hundred thousand dollars per tournament now and and they're pulling a championship this year yeah no so, entry fee championship that pays a hundred thousand yeah. Yeah, and I so. I I cannot stand the fact that I'm not fishing it. I've even made a <laughs> yeah. I even made a phone call to the ownership today. Like, well, you know, I'm going to miss a couple events. Can I still get in? Like, <laughs> you know, and I'm doing the math. I'm like, oh, I don't know, man. It'll be like maybe th I'm I'm trying to concentrate on the elites and do what's right in the elites. Yeah, absolutely. There's a, there is there was one direct conflict, and then there's one that's like you know it would be two elites back to back, and then I go to MPFL, and then I do another elite. And I did that last year, 35 days straight. And after the end of those 35 days, I ended up having, you know, I did I had some back issues. I had some stuff that it took me, it took me about three months to recover from. I think me and you talked right around that time yeah. and you had told me, you were like, dude, I'm, I'm dead. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I need like a few weeks to recover. So, yeah. but no, you know, the, you know, that's the one thing I'd say about the MPFL. And I don't want to focus on it too much is, you know, you, it's one of the reasons why I'm such a big fan is I've had uh, the opportunity to talk to, you know, you, the two most winning guys between both two of you. I mean, uh, you know, five championships, you and Taylor. Yeah. Um, right. uh, and then, you know, several other guys, Adam Savage, uh, Pug, uh, it's just several, several other guys. And, uh, you know, the one thing that you always hear is how, how, 
how well, how much uh, the management of it, how, uh, how they treat the anglers and, and try and keep everybody happy and really are, you know, for it. So, yeah, but, I did a video. I did a video on my YouTube channel, the, the Hook of a Soak Up, where I just talk about, you know, why it's a good opportunity. If you're really looking to be a professional fisherman, and, and if you have the means, okay, mm -hmm. I'm not trying to say it's not expensive. It's an expensive investment. But if you feel like you're there at that point, like I was, where locally I was winning, I mean, I'm going to use the phrase everything. I didn't win every single tournament, but when it came to AOIs and stuff, I really was putting those, stringing those together yeah. pretty, pretty easily. And, you know, I felt like I didn't know, am I ready for the national challenge? I'm going to kind of put my toes in. And I didn't really expect to do what I did, but it happened. And they kind of showed me where it's at. And so if it wasn't for the MPFL giving that platform out there, you know, I wouldn't be even to the elites right now. I would have never even made that attempt and that I wouldn't have had the confidence to do that. So, yeah. you know, and plus, you know, you win some money. I mean, I won two events and that was only paying 50,000. I think I won 165,000 in year one. So if those would have been two wins now, it would have been 265,000. Know? <laughs> so, yeah. Um, that, that opportunity is out there. So if there's someone that, you know, I just encourage anybody if, you know, they're on, the, they haven't got into the opens or maybe they've gotten the opens or maybe they're fishing the MLF side and they're looking for, yeah. you know, something more to fish. I mean, it's right there to be had and there's, there's good ownership and there's some good money to be made and good, good sponsor opportunities. A lot of my sponsor opportunities that I have now have been established through the success in the MPFL. Yeah. yeah I like what they do over there. And, uh, you know, I know John doesn't have one of the trophies just sitting beside of him, but man, they got one of the coolest <laughs> trophies you will yeah. ever see. You know, that yeah. big shield, it's it's pretty daggone, pretty daggone yeah. sweet. Um, yeah. I got somebody asking questions. Andy Leonard, uh, Bass Geek, are you going to be at the East Tennessee Fish Show? Guys, I am. I'm going to be in the Camus booth, so make sure you guys come by there and see me. I'll be over there. Uh, shining the boats for them, you know, <laughs> changing any sort of oil that needs to be changed. Uh, but I will be there. And so I do want to tell you guys, I know I haven't put anything out there, but I will be at Red Crest in the Camus booth. Uh, and I will be back in Knoxville. Um, so for you guys that don't know, uh, Major League Fish and their world championship is called the Red Crest. And they're going to be in Charlotte this year, Charlotte, North Kakalaki. So make sure you're down there. I'll be down there with them. And then I'm going to be at uh, back in Knoxville for the Bassmaster Classic. And I will be in the Camus booth for all three of those. Right now, that's the only three things I'm doing. Uh, some of you might know I'm not fishing to John's level. But I'm, I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to, to lean on John and call him up and be like, John, listen, man. I sucked in practice what I do today. <laughs> I'm going to fish the BFLs. I'm, I'm fishing a mountain division. I'm hoping I'm going to get my Camus boat in time for them. If not, we'll be fishing out of the old 98 Ruby with old smoky 98 Johnson on the back. And, you know, two fat boys, it might do 60. <laughs> but, uh, you know. Uh, nah, we need we need to, we need to get back to that stuff, man. I mean, <laughs> we got some great equipment. I got some great equipment, and yeah, I mean, yeah. But like I said, coming from the creek fish and stuff, who cares? Yeah, about, man. <coughs> you got your nice family, fancy Camus. I know you're going to be showing it off, but <laughs> when it comes down to it, man, we're putting way too much stock in all this equipment. We are. I agree. Fishermen, man. Like you know, when I'm... it comes down to it, the best the best fishermen that you find, yes, they may be good at electronics. Yes, they may be able to teach you some things you've never seen. Yeah. But when you put a rod in their hand and you tell them to hit the bank, they're going to be able to outfish you. And that's that's oh, yeah. where your basics come from. That's where that's where all the basics come from. Yeah. And, you know, like you, I, that's what I grew up doing. You know, mom and dad, you know, I'm a Gen Xer. So, you know, our parents would just drop us off anywhere. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, they would. You know. Uh, or you make know, us but, walk anywhere. Yeah, make us walk there. That's what, <laughs> that's what my mom and dad would do. My mom would yeah. take care of my uh, my mamma, so she'd take us up to this little lake in Big Stone called Big Cherry Reservoir, and uh, drop us off. We'd take my papa's boat out with a little old uh, motor guide and a some sort of car battery he had laying around, and we'd fish this lake up there. It'd be me, and my brother, and I think I was probably like twelve or thirteen, and my brother was uh, a, you know ten, eleven. And my best friend was like twelve. And, uh, man, we just fish all day long. We just go up there and fish all day. 
super clear water, you know, and uh, then she, of course, drop her bikes off. It was up to us to ride down the mountain to get back to the house. <laughs> <laughs> yep. So, yep. you know, it, it was good stuff, man. Fun, fun stuff. So now let's move. So let's move to the opens a little bit. There's some changes come through the opens this year. Now you were the last one, which you fished all nine anyway. So, you know, I haven't really talked to anybody about this. So now you can't qualify just by fishing three and fishing the regions. You know, you have to fish all nine. So what do you think, you know, why do you think they made that change? What's your opinion on that? Well, I think they, I think they made the change to get more well-rounded prepared mm. uh, fishermen that aren't taking as big a risk that they're, they're taking their risk and establishing themselves prior to the elites and not using that jump in the elite as their risk time. So that way they can uh, stick and stick and stay and be, you know, more well-rounded as a fisherman as well. Uh, my personal opinion on it is um, I think that that's where you're going to find exactly that a nine event season is going to find someone that's way more well-rounded as a, as a fisherman. Uh, the cream is going to rise more towards the top over time. And also, you know, what a lot of people don't understand is like when I qualified, I really, honestly, I'm not trying to exaggerate this at all. I can check my records. I think it was within two to four days of me, of me qualifying. I had an email that basically requested my deposits. And so wow. I haven't had a chance or opportunity to reach out and stir up a bunch of new, new sponsors for next year at all. Yeah. I just, didn't. I had to come back and get back to work and, just do business now i've made talk to some of my my sponsors that are existing and just talk to them about opportunities with inside there but as far as being able to go and knock doors I, I don't know how these guys that don't have their sponsorships already together can push the button and say unless they're putting it on credit or they're you know independently wealthy and they have a lot of cash mm -hmm. you can't do it so that is another por a large portion of what they're trying to do is get guys that are more established whose sponsorship portfolio is sitting there ready to go. Who's already got the backing that way when, yeah. you know, when they're called up to go in the game, they're not trying to strap on the pads. Their pads are already on. They're ready to go yeah. hit someone. So I, I can see that. Yeah. I mean, because that that's a, it, it's a big financial commitment to fish, you know, I mean, even three of the open. So, you know, it's a big financial commitment to, to get in there. And if you're fishing at that pro level, that elite level, yeah. you know, they, they want guys that are going to be able to, to, to fish the, the season, you know, yeah. to finish it out. And you, you have your one-offs, man. I think I got a handful of friends that, that I, one of them in particular, I want to name names. He is going to be able to fish all nine, but he didn't think he was going to be able to for a long time. He thought he would just be a three, three yeah. tournament guy. And he has the skill set to compete on the elites. But the port, that port, portion of percent is so small, you know, when you're making different rules and stuff for the overall, you kind of have to go with the higher percentages of what, and, and unfortunately there are some guys that kind of get left out, but the guys that are sitting on the sidelines that aren't competing in the opens already and all that and say that their dream's been taken from them, that's that's really, I don't know, so, somewhat of an excuse because uh, it takes so much effort in life, man, to even have the opportunity. There's just so much stuff that... Yeah, I mean, I look back and see the way that my dots have been connected. I mean, there's been a decade of me bleeding in the summertime, laying tile with my back hurt and breaking, working no, no sleep to just be able to have the opportunity to afford this. Yeah. And and I don't, you know, I don't think a lot of guys are willing to do that in life. Um, like I said, I didn't think it was going to be my opportunity either. Uh, but that's just what, that's the mentality. Maybe you can figure out a different way, but that's the mentality you yeah. got to have. And it is. I, <clears throat> I tell people all the time, life is about priorities and it's what you prioritize as important in your life that you'll spend your time and your finances finances to achieve. And, you know, if you really want it, you will find a way to put yourself in position to get it. You know, I don't remember who made this quote, but it's one of my favorite quotes of all time. And uh, you know, the difference between a dream and a goal is a plan. And, you know, that's that's one of my favorite quotes of all time. You know, if you really want something, I'd love to be president of the United States, but I ain't going to law school. Like if somebody just come along and went, poof, you president, I'd be like, I'm the president. <laughs> but, yeah, I ain't doing all the work to get there. You know, yeah. I love bass fishing. I love talking about bass fishing. I love fishing, you know, and uh, I love tournament fishing just like you, you know. And, you know, I, you know, I'm I'm. 
I want to get out there and try my hand and see what I can do at it. I don't feel like I'm anywhere near as good as you or, or any half the guys on the BFLs, but you know, I, I want to go compete just to see, and I want to fish yeah. it more and get better because, you know, I love it. <clears throat> and that's what this whole channel has done. And it's why I started it. It was to help other people get there and have confidence that, you know, that I don't have that John's helped me get, you know, John's been a, a big time coach for me at times, and and I appreciate the heck out of him for it. He uh, means big because I'm six foot five. <laughs> yeah, yeah. John ain't no little boy now. John ain't no little boy. Don't get, don't don't ever think that. But so now you know you know you made it out of the the opens. You made it to the elites, elite elect, as we said. <laughs> yeah. a minute ago. So we already got some questions coming in, David Williams. Uh, he said on the, the 2023 schedule, uh, what's the location slash event you're most excited about? What's got you jacked up? What are you like? Yeah, that's done and done. I don't know if I have a honest answer other than maybe the first two events out of the box. <laughs> I swear uh, to God, I was going to say it. <laughs> the, the Okeechobee event. It's going to be my first event with the elites. I, yeah. I, I'm definitely trying to reserve the, you know, the anxiety level or nervousness level and just, and, and all that. But I've had a really good success rate in Florida. Yep. So I've built some confidence down there as far as, as, as far as I feel comfortable in Florida. A lot of guys don't, I, I do. Uh, but also the fact that Lake Okeechobee to me is like one of those, it's like a legacy lake, right? I've, I've never yeah. competed on it. I will tell you this: I've never competed on any of these lakes that we're fishing this year. So, wow! Every one of them, every one of them is going to be new to me, uh, and we can talk about that later. I practiced that way in preparation all last year and the year before, so I'm I'm okay with that. Um, but you know, give me all these. One day I want to go to Clear Lake. You know, these are bucket list lakes. Yeah, and be able to fish yeah. my first Elite Series there. Roland Martin's 101 Bass Catching Secrets was like my Bible as a kid. There you I go. Mean, I, I want to go to, you know, the the, the Martin's Marina and uh, and see it, you know, and experience it and try to, you know, try to enjoy myself. You know, uh, Hank, a lot of the things you were talking about earlier about you don't know how you'll finish up or whatever in the BFL. To me, as bass fishermen, we need to quit talking about who's number one and all this stuff. Like, that's fun <laughs> at times. Yeah. That's not what That's not what got me to the level where I'm at right now. What got me to level right now was my love and passion for just trying to figure out bass. I and love when, it. And every day I would go out and try to learn to be a better fisherman. Learn I yeah. I got mad at the bass. I wanted to figure out the bass. <laughs> and then and then you use great fishermen as a as a as a litmus test to see yeah. how, how how well you've really figured them out. Like when you go and think you got them figured out, and then all of a sudden this boy brings in twice the sec you got, then yeah. you're like, Oh, wait a minute, there's a better way. There's more. Yeah. Yeah. And so that's the hunger, and that is where, you know, the pureness in fishing comes back in, in the in the in that uh, camaraderie between each other of helping yeah. each other, just learn and grow and fishmen. And that's that's what you know. I'm going to try to hold on to that purity and and love for the game. You know, I mean, that's that's what I really want to do, and I don't want to get caught up on. And if I become quote unquote one of the best, and I have a really good career, then then so be it. But I want to hold on to the love of fishing more than anything. Yeah. Yeah. That that's me too, man. That's, uh, you know, that's what got me into it. You know, I mean, that's, you know, I went out and I had a good day fishing from the bank one day, you know, when I was young, well, I mean, you know, and I was like, I'll never forget. I tell, I tell this joke. I was like the first pattern that I learned was prefront patterns. I was fishing my uncle's pond. <laughs> yeah, right. right. <laughs> you know? yeah. And I don't, I don't know how old I was. I mean, I probably had yeah. to be like seven, eight, and all of a sudden, yeah. it just started raining. And all of a sudden, I just started whacking them. And yeah. I was like, yeah. I was like, yeah. so you fish when it rains. <laughs> yeah. I remember that, too, being a kid. Study, you become a quasi-weatherman as a kid. Yeah. And you're like, you don't have much time. You're like, okay, there's a one-hour period here on Thursday night. Like, and so your buddy, your boys, and you are out there waiting. And, you know, of course, you're a kid, so you're barefoot and the storming. And you're whacking them. And you're like, so the next time, all the buddies are together. When's it raining next? When's it going to rain next? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Those are good memories. You know. But yeah, man. Uh, yeah, and, and for y'all that don't know, you know, John is a he, he ain't fished the two, but uh, he, he he's 
he's got something going on. There's some sort of love affair between him and Florida. I don't know what it is, but uh, yeah, he he normally he normally does pretty well. All well, right. I like the, I like the big girls, Hank. Have I ever told you the story about the big girls? Have no. I ever told you the story about the big girls? Thank you, I have. Florida's full of a bunch of big girls. Yeah. So my my boy, my son, at like, I'm literally before he was one had a rod and reel in his hand, and mm -hmm. and this is my older son, and he was a really big kid, so he was walking and running at nine months old, and by the time he was, you know, he was fishing out of a out of a stroller, like he was really. We had a pond in our front yard, so we you know casting all the time. So I had him at a very young age standing next to me in the boat in the front deck and he would put his body up against my leg and so I could feel him all the time. He wasn't allowed yeah. to get away. I never put him on a string or tied him in or anything like that, but I had, <laughs> if I release pressure, you know. And so at a very young age, he's with me. Well, Hank, when you're fishing, what are you fishing for, right? You're looking for the big girls. Yeah, You're looking yeah. for the big girls. Yeah. Always looking for the big girls. Now, my boy also has a personality where he doesn't talk very much. He keeps it very quiet. But he mm -hmm. soaks it all in. If you and me went out with him for three days, he might not say one one or two words during this time. But he'll remember everything you say, where you stood it. I mean, he he soaks it all in. Really, he's that's different good. than me. That's for sure. My mouth's running. He's <laughs> quiet. And and so, uh, one day I'm out. He's about five years old, and I'm out fishing. And he comes in the living room, and his mom, my wife, she's uh, in the living room, and she's doing one of those workout cardio videos. You know, like like the girls do. Richard Simmons style. I don't know what she was doing. <laughs> yeah, whatever it was. <laughs> and little John comes in and says, Mom, what are you doing? What are you doing? And she says, I'm trying to get skinny for your dad. And he said, dead serious. He said, no, no. <laughs> Daddy, <laughs> Daddy likes the big girls. Daddy likes the big girls. <laughs> <laughs> so that's Holy been the inside joke forever. My wife, my wife, now he's 15 years old now, right? So I've enjoyed, so this has been this little kid. So anytime my wife's having one of her little fat days or whatever that women have, you know, yeah, I go in there and yeah. I'm like, don't worry, baby. Remember, daddy likes the big girls. Daddy <laughs> likes the big girls. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my yeah. God, that's too funny. I can't wait to tell <laughs> my wife that one. I think we get off here. I'm going to tell her yeah. that. That's too good. All right. So we got a question from Daniel. He goes, now that you have live scope, how big of a difference have you seen fishing the live scope versus not having it? Now, I just here. got it. I just got it. <laughs> so I, I'm going to tell you, for me, I mean, it's a huge difference. You know, when I went out with John during during the spring, like, you know, we went over to this one bluff uh, that I'd had good success on before and it caught some good fish on. Um, you know, there was a lot of fish there that day, but it, it wasn't the size that he needed. But, you know, John was having a good time. I, I was like, man, you better stop sitting hook. But I was, we was just both laughing. It, it was real fun. And, uh, you know, I there's things you, there's things, there's patterns that you know are there, but how do you fish it without being able to see it, triangulate it? I'm that old and you know and and focus in on it and so we're going down this bluff like you'd always a, a great a great uh i found a huge school on a little lake uh that i fish that i grew up fishing just like me and john i, I went out the other day and uh it's it's off a bluff but it's 30 40 foot off that bluff on a, on a creek channel edge now if i didn't have a live scope in and it's in some rocks so i even went over it you know, with, with down and side imaging and you couldn't see those fish down there for those little, you know, boulders. But, you know, John was out there, we're going down that bluff and he just swings around behind us and by, off the bluff, 30, 40 feet, there's all kinds of shad and, you know, small mouth chasing. And he just starts jacking them on a jerk bait. And I was just like, okay, I have to get one of these. I mean, like tomorrow, it's got to happen today. I'm like, I'm I'm going to see if I can shove John's down my pants right now, <laughs> take off with it. Uh, I mean, for me, man, it, it's, it's made a world of difference. I mean, you still have to know, and it's, it's, you're not going to use it every time, everywhere at certain <clears throat> times of the year in certain lakes, but you, ha you still have to know seasonal patterns, seasonal movements, what the bass are, are going to, coming from. But uh, at the same time, I mean, man, you learn so much. And and the biggest key 
and I tell everybody, thank God for me. I, I've already learned it a long time ago. I'm a ledge angler, have been for years. Uh, so when I see a deep school out there, I know I can throw two, three, four lures, two, three, four different angles. And if they're not biting, I go, you know, I've got a, I got a clock in my head. That's the hardest thing. That's the hardest thing because you're going to see things that you're not ever going to see on down, ever going to see on side. And, and you've got to move away and learn to get away from those fish. Cause you can waste some hours chasing things. Yes. I think I think a uh, a lot of guys that maybe haven't experienced live live scope or maybe they haven't but they really haven't got tuned into it or they're just curious like that question is is con- pointing out you know they they see the videos of the the hot clicks of a guy cast to catch yeah. casting at a fish individual fish and catching it <clears throat> and they and, and it's been sold as if that's the sole pr- uh, priority for that tool yep and that's really not the sole priority I, you know you got to understand like. I'm going to go to nine events this year fishing against the top 100 bass fishermen in the world in the elites. And I'm not going to be able to pre-scout these lakes. It doesn't appear. So, so yeah. I'm never going to be there before I got basically three days of practice, two and a half, three days of practice to break down the body of water, to find the fish and find, and, and that's the next level step is not only just find fish, but find fish that can compete at that level. Yeah. And I say all that to say this, that tool can help you interpret what's going on in the water. It can mm-hmm. and it, in the environment of the water, the bait of the water, and and those are all features that you could look, you could use two D for. You could use your old flasher for your down yeah. your side, but its interpretation level is so much quicker, and yes. so much allows you to interpret so much more information that much quicker. That it helps you you know break down water and 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 there's been a lot of examples that I could give about where I rolled into an area, put the troll motor down, and I've just picked up the troll motor and left. Didn't make any casts. Because I didn't have to make spend an hour in there to realize the area is dead. Yep. I put the trauma down. I was like, oh, this area is dead. It's yep. time to move on, which is what real bass fishermen at a high level do. Yep. They are not stuck on spots. It's not spot fishing anymore. Mm-hmm. At the lower levels, it seems like we're all about spots. We're all about spots and location. Yep. You know, you get a call from your buddy, hey, where should I fish? Well, fish where the fish are at. Like, use your skills and electronics and, yep. and your instincts. And just like a bird flies mm-hmm. from one side of the lake to the other, yeah, you, you've got to be more like a bird, and that's what forward shooting sonar allows you to do. A lot of times, is is really interpret the environment, what's going on. Yeah, yeah, and you know, for you guys that I, I'm, I'm going to share a little story with you. Uh, me and my buddy, shout out to my buddy Jeremy, who I know is out there watching. Um, so we've got uh, we work at the same place. We got a guy. He's our, he's our HVAC guy, Stephen. He's got into fishing. And, uh, you know, Jeremy just put uh, garments on his boat and, uh, you know, forward facing sonar. You know, I took Jeremy out literally the first day I got mine. Uh, my wife calls. We're just getting it tweaked in, by the way, using videos that uh, Mr. Soak up here has out there. Uh, <laughs> I think we <laughs> used I think I used the uh, uh, one. What was it? Wired to fish. That right? Yeah, that was that, yeah. that video is over three years old now. I imagine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but you know, it it helped. We we got it tweaked in. Um, but uh, you know, uh, Jeremy had never even seen one. Walked right up to the front. I know where some where some suspended bass are. Me and Jeremy fish this lake a lot. Fish this school out over a ledge. I gave. I told him to pick up an underspin throw out there. I think he made two casts, caught one. <laughs> he, he lined right up on it. I mean. So it's it's one of those things, I mean, you know, yeah, that is one of the things. Finding structure is another thing. Seeing how the bass react is another thing. How they're set up, how they're positioned is, I mean, there's just so much to it that you can see. But, you know, our buddy Steven, he was like, oh, man, is it that good? And I was sitting at work one day, and he, he bought one, and he calls me up. And, and he didn't even have to say nothing. He goes, what are you doing? I said, it's that good, ain't it? He <laughs> goes, he goes, dude. He goes, I, I literally just took it out to, you know, tweak it in and look at it. And he said, I seen a brush pile in 25 foot of water that I never would have known was there. And I dropped a little Kitek and I caught three fish out of it. And he said, I've ne-, he goes, you told me, you told me that it would change my world. He said, but I never thought like that. <laughs> 
I said, it's one of those things, man, you can't really, can, you just can't really grasp it until you literally fish it. I mean, you can't. It's, it is just what it is. I, the term is overused, but not for this. It's a game changer. I mean, hands down. All right. So, Stevens, 86, I believe you need forward-facing sonar to compete at the pro level. Do you all think it's needed now at the local level? Uh, maybe not to the club level yet, but it depends on how big the club is, really, how competitive that club is. You know, I fished the BFLs, and I fished the uh, uh, Morristown Marine, and I can tell you that's a $10,000 first place tournament with good payouts and yeah you have to have it you have to have it there i mean it's also it also depends on the style of the lake you know i lived on a, on a fishing lake for 10 years we had jackpots once or twice a week and it's it's a muddy lake with with uh water willow all the way around you don't catch fish deeper than three foot you're flipping or frogging the whole time and i mean you can't you put your hands in the water you can't see your hands it's mud 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 yeah. everything's silted siltation uh you wouldn't need it there to compete at all. So I think a lot of it has to do with yeah. the environment that you're that you're in. There are some lakes that you know you'd have to have it to to, to compete. Um, but I, I think more importantly, if someone's asking that question, like, do I invest in a live scope or do I invest time? You know, i.e., time equals money into your skill set. I would say yeah. put the time in, learn how to fish the bank first, yeah. and then go then go offshore if you want to continually compete. Um, if you really, really want to be a better fisherman. Now, if you want to kind of, you know, do some shortcuts and catch some fish and have fun, and yes, you're going to do that. But yeah. um, the guys that know fish behavior are going to are going to dominate the guys that just have a lot. There of you go. And that even comes right down to kind of what I say about you know baits. You know, we on YouTube, I know we talk about a lot of baits, and we hear the term you know uh, confidence lures and that sort of stuff. And yeah, confidence lures are good, but you know, you know lures and baits and, and graphs and everything else. It's a tool to put in your toolbox to use at certain times when the bass are moving. You know, I, I don't remember I was watching somebody's podcast the other day and they were talking about, you know, how live scope. And for me, you know, I'm such a big fan of it because we were fishing suspended bass, you know, well before live scope here because yeah. we fish, uh, it, it's Highlands Reservoirs. It so, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's you know, smallies, even largemouth out there, very pelagic fish that are out there, you know, in open water. And so, uh, and, and then the largemouth that are in those lakes generally, I mean, it's, it's, it's not uncommon for them, you know, in the summer and even in the winter to be 40, 45 feet deep. So, so in those Highlands reservoirs, yeah, it's it's a it's an absolutely great tool to have. Uh, oh, I think it was Wheeler and and a couple of guys that I've seen talking about it. But uh, you know, at the same time, you may be fishing lakes like Okeechobee, and it may not be that important to you. You know, you're you're focused on flipping heavy grass mats, and I mean, maybe maybe finding the weed edge is more important, and that's where it comes in handy for you. So. You know, it's a lot of lot of different stuff. So now, let's get into talking about. Uh, <laughs> well, here. So I'm going to say this: Saber Outdoors. What's your favorite bait? What color do you have confidence in? No matter what the bait, uh, minor flukes and any bait. So that, that just kind of fell into what I was saying right there, but. Yep. Uh, you know, so so give me if you could catch a bass on anything, like it was a perfect day. John's going out. He he's got his favorite bite. What is it? I I get torn up a little bit between a, a frog, mm. uh, a frogger spook. You know, a topwater bite, and then just the old school, just the old school creek creek flipping bite. You know, there you go. There you, you go. Know, especially pre spawn to spawn when you just you know not sight fishing the beds but just dragging you feel that yeah. thump it's swimming off in the creek and you jack it yeah and then the boat flip on the you know with the texas rig so uh you know my colors are very simple when i'm frog fishing i got three colors i got black white and i got a uh, pumpkin seed which is like a i've been throwing that last couple of years with booyah and it's like a it's an orange color and it's only in the junior size and i throw a little pop in one so that right there is something i kind of feel like i can go behind people other people aren't 
But so I just keep those three colors. I don't have a lot of colors. Uh, I don't think colors are as important as, as people make it. So like, and when I go into my plastics, you know, I've, I've got green pumpkin, uh, either a black blue or black neon. Uh, mm-hmm. Early spring, I go black neon. I like to have a little bit of red in, in that in that play. And then I'll have and then I'll have a white color. And most of that's usually for a trailer. And those are really the only three. Now, when I go down to Florida, I will bring out some June bugs because June bugs uh, something that works in that tannic color water for yeah. some some reason. That tannic color water June bugs really really shines. And when I go down to like around hydrilla and stuff, I may add a little bit more like a red bug color to my stuff mm. just because I've had some good experience with that. But for the most part, in generalities, if I was to break out my plastics of all different kinds, they're all those are the only colors I'm gonna have. Just repeatedly, just you know, not too many colors. That's good. That's good. You guys know generally I'm a swim bait guy, and swim baits. I mean, it really all comes down to a shad pattern. I either want a really translucent, like a ghost shad. Uh, you know, in the clear water that I fish up here and then something that really looks like some sort of shad and then something maybe, you know, a little more solid white with a little bit of sartreuse down the side for when it gets a little dirtier. That's that's my favorite bite in the world right there. Hey, I want to give a big shout out. Thank you, John, for the $5. Thank you very much. Do you think the next world record bass is more likely to be caught with a forward-facing sonar than without? Oh uh, yeah, I, I don't it's know. Definitely, it's definitely, yeah. it's got. I mean, it's got to come over from Japan. We don't have those fish here, so yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. That's uh, and you know, I mean, it 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 could help. I know I've seen some big ones. Man, I found a huge school of carp today. <laughs> I mean, just a massive school out deep. And at first, you know, when I seen them, I went, "Oh my God, look at those!" And then I noticed their head was <laughs> shining more than their body, yeah. and I was like. Oh, no, that's carp. <laughs> yeah. They got that hard tail, too. Yeah, yeah. So what? Uh, <clears throat> so what's what do, what do you think? So, you know, have you talked to anybody? Hey, what is it like? What what What's the things I need to expect? You know, fishing the, the elites this year. What's your – kind of what's your, what's your nervous thoughts? Like, when you think about it, what, you know, what's the thing? Like, you know, I, I'll tell you right now, as a co-angler – when I'd fish the BFLs every morning before I'd before I'd have to get in some dude's truck with some dude's boat that I didn't know and back him down. Like I didn't care once we were in the water. We're fishing yeah. then. But man, having to deal with somebody, I'd almost get so sick I'd throw up. Cause you know, you're you're it's a lot of traffic. It's dark. You're in somebody else's rig, you know. Yeah, made, hey, you used I, to always I, make me nervous. I get nervous, you know. Uh, I'm such a good-looking guy that I just wonder if my wife can, you know, <laughs> she can make it without me, you know. Like, I want to be gone nine more weeks. She's going to miss me so much. And, you know, I don't know if you guys follow my social media, but I get a lot of marriage advice out there. Oh, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, the, the, that's my biggest concern is my wife, you know, missing me. And uh, yeah, I, I'm probably going to get a full-size, you know, poster, you know, just there, just standing. <laughs> uh, just get one. Cardboard cutouts. <laughs> has the, you know, I'm not uh, nervous. At, I'm not nervous at all. I'm not nervous at all. Uh, I'm happy with where I'm at. I've got a lot of experience. Uh, I've built my way up slowly, and I'm and I'm thankful for that. I'm sure there'll be some nerves that'll hit it in a moment or two, especially if I have a good one on or something like that. Um, but I, I'm I am more anxious about uh, just putting that first fish in the boat and yeah. that's that's probably it but i'm not i don't have any i don't have any anxieties at all i i don't believe in doc talk i think it's a hindrance and oh I'm actually yeah, absolutely going into the npfl i already knew it was a hindrance i'd already learned enough from fishing the bass nations vfls and stuff and yet i still kind of got involved with some guys sharing some information and it just bit me he didn't do any good uh so you know uh, bradley hallman and i have room together coming through the the opens this year and both of us qualifying, uh, yeah. we both just kind of have the mindset. We're just going to keep our circle small, work yeah. together. We can trust each other 100%. We don't feel like we're trying to get over each other at all. We fish similar at times, and we can fish different at times. Yeah. And so that's good. You know, we can kind of get some different perspective. And so I'm not looking to get a lot of advice. I do have really good contacts, really good advice. Fishing with Alpha Angler Rods, you know, Brandon Polinick has given me some advice. And, you know, it's more business advice than it is yeah. uh, on the water advice. Matter of fact, I'll tell you a funny story. When I was fishing the opens, I called him and asked him for some advice about something. I said, hey, by the way, I'm not calling for like spots or fishing advice. 
He's like, good. I want to give it to you anyways. And I'm like, <laughs> oh, okay. He's like, he's like, if you can't make it on your own, you you shouldn't be there. And I'm like, oh, man, okay. <laughs> I'll never ask. <laughs> so, so that's that's kind of how it is. And, and actually, I, I feel that way and I believe that way. I don't really trust what other – I trust enough of my own skill set that I need to go through my procedures of eliminating yes. things. And if you go and get little parts of information for other people – it can split. You can get right in the middle of your yes. elimination period and you're going to take you down a trail. Next thing you know, time's up and you haven't fully broke down everything that you need. So very yeah. rarely to never does somebody's advice help you out. Yeah. And I've, you know, I've, I've learned that. So. Yeah, that's me too. I, I remember I was actually practicing for a BFL. You know, I, I'd go out and practice a lot of times even as a co-angler out of my boat and I had a buddy, he was down there. He wasn't able to practice with me that day, but he'd told me all this. He'd been out maybe a week before, you know, early spring, cold, cold day, super clear water. And I was trying to kind of go out and duplicate what he was doing. And it just was not working. And I finally about lunch and it was still like 28 degrees that day, at, you know, at 12. And I was like, okay, that's enough. I got to go be me. And, you know, within, uh, I think 20 minutes, you know, I went out and started putting things, doing things my way, the way I fish, the way I'm, I like to do things in my head in the order that I like them, the procedure, like you said, in your head. Um, and I found a school, a small mouth man and boated two over five, you know, on, on, on this huge school. And I was like, okay all right, I can do this. I know what I'm doing. I'm not an idiot, <laughs> you know? And, and so that's doc talk, man, doc talk, uh, you know, before a tournament is just not good. Doc, you can learn a little things on after the tournament. Cause then guys, they don't lie as much then, you know, there's a lot of practice champions out there. Yeah. There's a lot. Everybody's yeah. a practice champion. They was this guy. There's this guy in the tournament, so they're going to say his name, but we used to joke about it all the time. Man, he won. I mean, he'd send pictures out, you know, right. to these groups. I mean, he won every practice, dude. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then tournament day, he couldn't figure it out. I don't understand. I caught 32 keepers. Yeah, right I caught. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah. what are you doing, yeah. man? Yeah. You know, you relocated everybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, the IVH boys, big shout out to those guys. I know them real well. So where can I get a cool hat like that? Yeah, man, we got the Bass Geek hats. Hey, we got the black ones, got the blue ones. They're they're going to be on the uh, Bass Geek shop here in a little bit. Uh, these are this is a sample, and check this out. We got the beanies to go with it too, so you can see the. I didn't want to put the whole Bass Geek thing on there. I just kind of wanted to keep it simple. You know, I don't think the I love my logo, but I think on a hat, it'd be weird. So, <laughs> you know, so we just went with the BG and a little bass in the middle of it. So I like that pretty well. So uh, when is the first tournament? February. Holy cow. It's coming up hot and heavy. Hot yeah, and heavy. About three weeks out. Maybe three weeks out. Yeah. Hey, you know what I did for the first time, Bass Geek, that I've never done? Uh -oh. What did you do? Well, I, I have, but I haven't followed through with it. Uh, and I'm trying to fall through. I started listening to all these podcasts and everybody talking. I'm like, mm -hmm. you know what I'm going to do this year? I'm going to do fantasy fishing this year. So I did fantasy oh! fishing. I signed up and made my team uh, on on fantasy fishing. So I'm pretty I'm pr I'm pretty excited about trying to follow that while yeah. I'm competing. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to get like, you know, am I going to get upset if I bump one of my guys out? <laughs> or am I going to be happy? <laughs> like, bittersweet, man. <laughs> bittersweet. <laughs> hey, man. Brian runs a league too. I swear you need to you oh, need to really? do it. Yeah, you need to jump in on that, man. You need to jump in. We need to get you back over there too. Uh because he's uh yeah, he runs a league. He normally has uh I think it was like 70 some people in. He gives away to the winner like a hundred dollar gift card. You can come in there and win that hundred dollar gift card, have a little inside information, make yeah. everybody mad. <laughs> Brian's been good to me. He gotta watch me weigh in the final day at James River, and I think I yeah. I don't remember if I had 23 pounds or not, but I, I, I definitely had like 22 or 23, yeah. somewhere around that range. And, you know, I think I had one about seven. So he, yeah. he got to be there and video me taking that sack out of the. I know, man. You know, I felt pretty cool. It, it killed me. I wanted to come down to watch bar, man, and hang out with you last year, but I ended up having to work and couldn't get off for it. Or I was sick. I can't remember what it was. Something happened and I couldn't get down there. So 
that killed me, but I see you're going to be at Lake Murray and even Santee Cooper. So I may be able to sneak down there and be the yep. uh, soak up squad. Go, John! Yeah. Shirt <laughs> off, spray painted shirt. Yeah, big ass. Real... <laughs> hey, man, we was talking about, you know, we talked about this a little bit earlier. You know, you, you're, uh, you're affiliated with the Bass Tank, you know, and uh, we know that there's a pretty good deal going on with the bass tank right now That's so i want you to go ahead yeah. and, you know, we got, shout that out we currently have 93 sv which is nine inch screen and that's for uh 5.99 and then you got your live scope whether you want an lbs 32 or 34 but you can go out with a combination a live scope combo uh bundle however you want to word it for you know about fifteen hundred dollars you can be out the door so Dang. if you go to the bass the bass tank.com and you know i might be off 100 bucks you know forgive me for that but listen there's there's nowhere else that you're gonna be able to find that deal. So yeah. go to live scope dot uh, the bass tank dot com and look up our live scope bundles, the ninety three SV bundle, and and uh, yeah, hit them, get them before they're gone because it's it's a it's a wall supplies last opportunity. Yeah, that's a heck of a deal, guys. If you're wanting to dip your toe into the live scope genre, man, that's a heck of a deal. So y'all better get out there and grab those up. So Jim ask. What things should you learn fishing the bank, John? I'm new to lake fishing, fished a pond all my life. Thanks. So I'm going to go with the greatest, most fun tip that my dad passed down for me from when I was a kid. And that was never forget the backs of the creeks in the spring. And we would watch the weather. And now this is Oklahoma weather. So depending on where you're at, uh, but for the most part, it's pretty true, universal. Uh, we would for every week where the water temperature was a minimum or the air temperature was a minim minimum 70 degrees and didn't drop below 50 at night. And so what that would do is that would bring that temperature up to the backs of the creeks around noon to three o'clock up to that 60 degree point. And that would pull it out of that. That's pulling it out of that winter time. And it's getting to that early spring. And that first group of fish, usually in Oklahoma, we're looking for dogwood to bloom. Then the red. Yeah, to bloom, same here. The yeah, the dogwoods, the the sand bass start hitting the creeks, and by the time the red buds, usually that's about the time the crappie move in. And we have a weird thing: crappie used to spawn before the bass, but it, it just depends on flooding and things like that. They yeah. can refrain a lot. If everything's stable, the crappie will go first. If it's not stable, the bass will go in first. And so you're just getting in those creeks and they go to the very backs uh, where it's calm and those fish will move in there and spawn. And, and if you can hit that right, waiting. Listen, if you're bass fishing. And you find them great, but 100% you'll at least hit some sand bass and some crappie and stuff like that. So that's what nice. I love to do when we're talking about waiting, uh, waiting for legs. Now, Cajun Rob, I'll be honest with you. What are your guys' thoughts on the bait pop fish formula? I don't think I've ever used that. I don't. I've never heard of it. You heard of it, John? Yeah, yeah. Bait pop is a, is a product people are putting on their lures to try to get an extra return on their live scope. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. I guess you know, I, here I, I am the bass geek, and I'm out the loop. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't, I don't feel the need for it. Um, I think that a lot of times it's kind of like drugs and supplements. We're trying to take things and, and put mm -hmm. something in our body to to solve a problem. And the problem is, guys need to learn how to use their life scope better, um, learn how to tune things in better. So, yeah. Now, with that being said. I also have never used the product, so I don't want to speak against these guys. I understand yeah, yeah. the marketing and the branding and the idea, but when products and stuff just pop off the shelf like crazy and everybody's buying it, it's not always because it's working. It's because fishermen are trying to shortcut and get and get you know results instead yeah. of time and experience. They're trying to like solve it by putting something on their bait. So yeah, that's that's pretty honest. Not mean to be brutal at all. I ain't no. Nothing I mean, I'm scared. I'll be honest with you. You know, I'm I'm a network engineer, so I mean, I'm a little skeptical of it. I'm I don't know. I yeah, I'd, I mean, I'd like to good. see it. I mean, if it yeah. works, it works. Uh, Dave Washburn asked, "What's your best and worst tournament memories?" And I'll ask, "What's your?" We'll say, "What is your?" Let, let's gear it more toward like the fish, the fish that is like your the fish that your best catch. And the one that got away that was just like crap. You know what? I, I will answer that, but I think I have a best and worst fish moment at the same time. <laughs> I think I have one. Okay. I All I right. This is so like I got 
I got a longer version of the story, which we can tell later, but there is yeah. a beautiful way that I qualified for the Forest Wood Cup. And during that time, before the Forest Wood Cup, my dad, uh, you know, was dying of cancer. And he never officially told me that he had stage four and he was dying. I found out. I knew he was. I wasn't going to fish the Coast Championship. And my dad kind of said, hey, you need to go. And there was a beautiful thing that happened at Coast Championship that had me get a top ten and qualify for the Forest Wood Cup. And I'd love to tell that story some other time, but I want to talk about the Force Wood Cup itself. By the time the Force Wood Cup came around, my dad had passed away. So mm. my dad was my hero. He was my fisherman guru. He's the one that taught me fishing. He's the one that gave me this love and passion that I had was being like my dad. So my connection with my father, because we didn't see eye to eye as we grew up, you know, as I grew up in life, we, we have different, That's... you know, different things. But we always could bond over fishing, always. No matter what was going on, we could always bond over fishing. In college football, I guess we'd say that. <laughs> yeah. uh, so those two things. But I went to the Force Wood Cup at uh, Wachita, Lake Wachita. And my best moment was having the opportunity after my dad passed away. I lo- literally thought this was the peak of my professional fishing career. I thought this was the top. You know, of course, at that time, you don't know that the Force Wood Cup's going to disappear and all everything yeah. that's going to happen. I never knew that I'd have this opportunity we have now. But at yeah. that moment in time, I really thought that this was the pinnacle. And so that moment, feeling like, like, uh, like it, like I was blessed with the opportunity, and that I was sharing a moment with my dad that had passed away, uh, that was the best moment. The worst moment was that I broke down both days. And that, oh the man! Second, the second day, I lost my last three or four hours because of uh, because wow. my because my install of my boat wasn't done right. But mm-hmm. once again, breaking into the best moment. It's what spawned the idea of creating the bass tank. And nice. the spawn of the bass tank is what's given me an opportunity to go all the way up and fish the elite. So without that mm-hmm. moment, without that wow. breakdown happening, I don't think I'm sitting here fishing the, the Bassmaster Elite mm-hmm. today. Like you said, it's really interesting how the dots kind of fall in place. Yeah. You know, it's, you know, I, I know a lot of people, you know, some bad things can happen. And I know it's happened to me too. And, uh, you know, and you, you, you get caught up in that moment, but then it, it's almost always you look back on it and and they lead to uh, something and, and an opportunity that's uh, that's almost always better. Now, listen, guys, John, we, we don't want to keep him. We've been on here for about an hour, so if I don't get to all of your uh, questions, forgive me. I do want to uh, get John off here because, I'm going to make know, you look like the bad guy because my wife <laughs> At my yeah. nephew's birthday party, and all I got to do is talk fishing. So he's the bad guy. See, he's, he's listen. I'll take it. I'm not there. That's that's man rule number one. The guy that's not ha- there gets the blame. <laughs> uh, man, I'm not going to be able to make it to the expo. Uh, I'm gonna power through a couple of these. What's your favorite state to fish? I mean, it may be Florida right now. I think I it's know. Florida at the moment. I know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when'd you? When and what was your first ever tournament win? That's a good one. Well, I, it was like a Boy Scout tournament when I was like six years old, if you really you want to be honest. It was like <laughs> the most fish you could catch. And I out-bluegilled out them all, man. I had a basket full of bluegills. Cool. So, well, well, I, rem- well, I, I remember getting a trophy for it, too. Yeah. Hey, it counts, then. It, it counts. Yeah. You get the hardware. Yeah. You still, here's, the, here's my question. Do you actually still have the trophy? You know what? I don't think I do. I, I oh, don't, I don't, uh, yeah. I've got a bunch of them, but I don't have them. But if okay, so more serious note: What year did you win your first tournament? Uh, yeah. I mean, I won a few. Like I said, I won a few as a teenager too. So I, 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 I didn't fish from nineteen to twenty-seven, and when I came back to fishing at twenty-seven, my first tournament series was the Bass Nation as a as a co angler. But back then, you fished against the boaters as well. And my first year back as a coing, with fishing as a coing without my own boat, I qualified for the Bass Nation National Championship. <laughs> and my nice. first turn, big tournament as a boater with a big motor was at the Bass Nation National Championship on Harris Chain in Florida in 2000, uh, 2009. And I had Brandon Card on my right side, and I had Ben Parker on my left, who both qualified wow. for the elites that, that year. And so... Uh, I didn't even know how to drive a boat, Hank. I mean, I really didn't. They, back then, they loaned I'm you. I'm the air's chain in this was, much water. I'm winging yeah, it. Yeah. I, I can tell you, 
I can tell you a story about jumping a sandbar because I turned too soon <laughs> into an area at 60 miles an hour. I dig the hazard. That oh sandbar, my God. Not intentional either. Yeah. Oh no, I mean, that, so, so that, mm. those are some of my first, you know, bigger tournament, but that yeah. tournament qualifying for that tournament like that, it gave me the blood, the competition taste that I had from a kid, yeah. you know, competing in sports that, Hey, you know, so. All right, man. Listen, I appreciate the heck out of you, John. Thank you. Good luck this year. Anything you want to say about the elites before we go? Anything you know you you know knowledge you want to drop? Oh wait, you know what? I want I did want to answer this question right here. For me, I never try anything new. Like I might change tactics, but if you're talking about like try something you've never done before, uh, I don't know that I tried a whole lot during a tournament, but. I, Let's say what at what point during a tournament do you change up tactics? You know that if they're not biting, I'm, I'm most part. You know, I lean more towards that like 15 minute rule. I'm going to change yeah. up a different lure, a different location. It may not be a big change, but a little bit mm -hmm. of change. And if I'm in the same kind of area or the same kind of if for an hour and I have no success, I'm going to move on, unless for something I know for a fact that thing thing pops off in two hours and I'm trying to guard the spot. Gotcha. I don't do goodwill at spot garden. I just don't have the patience. No. I'm, I'm too. I'm, I'm, people ask me all the time. They're like, I can't fish. And I'm like, why? And they're like, I'm too impatient. I'm like, I'm the most impatient person that you've ever met. They're like, well, how do you fish? And I was like, impatiently. That's my style. I, I yeah. fish impatiently. Yeah. All right, man. Listen, thank you. Thank you again. Thank I appreciate you. the heck out of you. Guys, make sure you go follow him in the uh, description below. We've, we've got the links to his channel and uh, his uh, social medias. You know, he's on Facebook. He's on Instagram. Y'all go check him out. A, for the fishing. B, for the uh, marriage advice. Trust me, it's priceless. <laughs> John, thank you, brother. Uh, don't be a stranger. Holler at me and Brian. We'll get you over on Bass Cast too when you're free. And uh, thank you again, man. I, I Again, can't say enough for, for being a friend and, uh, uh, and being on the show. Guys. Sorry if we didn't get to your questions. You know, I love all of you. Hey, listen, uh, probably the next show, it's just going to be a one-on-one -on -one with me and you all. Going to talk about some things, some stuff for uh, Bass Geek coming up this year. I will let you all know when the hats and stuff go live. Uh, you know, I'm kind of taste testing them for you. You know, they're better with a little salt. I'm not going to lie. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I'll let you know when all that happens. And uh, as always, man, you guys rock. I love you. See ya.